It feels like almost every year, there's that one guy who you watch fall in the NBA draft, and the whole time, you just find yourself thinking, what is happening right now? Sometimes, though, there's a legitimate reason for that. Maybe teams are freaked out by the guy's injury history. Maybe he completely tanked every interview and gave teams strong reason to doubt that he would work hard or fit into their culture. But sometimes, teams just miss. And there always comes a point when those questions need to stop mattering and you just bet on talent. Well, this year, a whole lot of teams just missed on Cam Thomas. And clearly, Robin Hood was not on duty on draft night because the team who ended up snagging him at number 27 just happened to be the Brooklyn Nets. And he immediately went out there and won Summer League MVP for them. Although it seems miraculous that the Nets lucked into such a talented guy, and we'll get into what makes him so special in a second, I actually don't think it's that hard to imagine how people talk themselves out of Thomas. This draft was rich with depth and guys who project as high-level role players even into the second round. Players who can make the right decision or shoot the ball well or defend at a high level. And some teams probably looked at Cam and thought to themselves, yeah, this guy can score, but a lot of dudes can score in the NBA. Can he do so efficiently? Can he amplify his teammates with his playmaking? Can he defend at a high level? Maybe a lot of teams didn't feel that they had convincing answers to those questions. But here's the thing. There came a point when those questions just weren't worth asking anymore. When you're taking Usman Garuba, who still hasn't shown he can competently play offense, or a simple low ceiling 3 and D guy like Quentin Grimes over an electric pure scorer like Cam Thomas, you're overthinking it. Because sure, a lot of guys can score in today's NBA, particularly at the guard position. So that has become something of an oversaturated market, but very few guys can score like Cam Thomas can at 19 years old. Right now, Cam is coming off of a historic summer league performance in which he averaged 27 points per game, the most by any player to see action in at least three summer league games in over a decade on nearly 57% true shooting, which earned him league MVP. Now, some of you may be sitting at home thinking, blah, blah, summer league, who cares? You can't say a guy is a steal just because of that. And I would say, well, that's not what we're doing here with Cam Thomas. Sure, his summer league performance was a nice affirmation of his abilities, but this dude looked like a steal long before he showed up in Vegas. To establish that, first, let's just look at his collegiate production at LSU, which was also genuinely, and I mean this, historic. As a freshman last season, Thomas scored 23 points per game, which made him the highest scoring player in the SEC in five years. Obviously, that's already impressive, but it doesn't stop there. In that campaign, Thomas also became the only freshman to lead the SEC in scoring in over 30 years and was the highest scoring SEC freshman in, again, over 30 years. Keep in mind, this is a conference that has produced five number one overall picks since 2010. That's three more than any other conference, and this man went 27th in the draft. So now, maybe you're waiting for the catch, because how is this possible? Did he shoot 60 times a game on some lowly eight-win team? Not at all. Thomas did this for an LSU squad that went 19-10 overall and 11-6 and against SEC opponents and won an NCAA tournament game. He also scored on solid efficiency with a true shooting percentage of 55.3 and remarkably posted the second lowest turnover rate in the entire conference, which is insane with the volume of touches he had. So clearly, that production should have immediately turned more heads than it did. But the dude didn't just put up numbers. Thomas's skill set was highly projectable to the NBA as well. In fact, and I really mean this, had Thomas been in the 2020 draft, I think he would have had the most advanced perimeter scoring skill set in the entire class. Now, to be clear, I'm not taking him over Anthony Edwards as far as long-term projection goes, but if we're talking about refined, all-around scoring skill set, he's further along than it was last year. He just happened to get lost in the shuffle in one of the most gifted draft classes ever this year. Put him in that 2020 draft, and everybody is looking at Cam Thomas very differently. So, Cam is a bucket. But what actually defines his skill set there? Well, he is a highly deceptive, crafty scorer who understands how to manipulate defenders in a way that you very rarely see, especially out of an incoming rookie. Cam doesn't have overwhelming athleticism, but he's a natural space creator with a highly advanced go-to weapon in his bag, the step back. Cam loves his step back going left. It's a move he can turn to at any time, and it shows a level of offensive development that is very rare in 19-year-olds. And Cam's step back isn't just good for his age. It stands out even compared to legitimate NBA guys. Thomas can dynamically change his leverage almost instantaneously from a variety of angles, and he creates a ridiculous amount of space with his step back, like five feet of room while maintaining his balance and accuracy as a shooter. Also, while he prefers the step back going left, he's also shown the deadly ability to create space by hopping back to his right, which just adds another dynamic to his unpredictability as a scorer. 
That is a special thing to already have in his bag, but it's far from the only element of Thomas's game that's incredibly crafty and difficult to read. He uses vicious jab steps often, effectively creating the slim windows he needs to get off a clean jump shot, and if he senses a defender may be overly zealous, he loves to use pump fakes from the perimeter to get his man out of position and create driving lanes. If there's a fake to be made, Thomas can do it, and he also has nice footwork in traffic where he's shown the ability to create space with a Euro step. Cam's also what I would describe as a fundamentally jittery mover, and he's constantly testing defenders with slight twitches. He loves hesitation dribbles, and he's always in some phase of a deceptive movement, bobbing, weaving, and faking with the option to get up a shot from wherever, whenever, and it just throws defenders into a panic. And when I say get up a shot from wherever, whenever, I mean that. Cam has a true scorer's mentality. He didn't shy away from 28-footers in college, nor did he shy away from tough turnarounds or floaters in traffic. And that can be a hindrance in his game. Those fadeaways are a great tool to have, but they aren't always the most efficient, and Thomas can lean on the floater a bit too much given where he's at now with that shot. But they reflect a knack for big time, difficult shot making, and unabashed confidence, which, if you're actually good, is generally a positive, especially for a 19 year old who still has time to rein some aspects of that in and find the right balance in his game. Cam also has a tricky handle. He loves the hesitations, but he also effectively uses between the leg dribbles into explosive bursts, which is just another reason he's so tough to stop. Just to add another dimension to Thomas' skill set as a scorer, he also thrives in transition and is highly aware of opportunities to attack there. Another truly special part about Thomas' game is he doesn't have to necessarily excel from the field to have a great scoring night, because he has a rare knack for drawing fouls. Last season, Thomas led the NCAA in free throws made by a wide margin, 24 to be exact, which equates to almost one per game, and he did so on excellent efficiency, having knocked down 88% of his attempts there. That immediately transferred to his time in the Summer League, where he hit a whopping 8.3 free throws a game, even more than his collegiate average of 6.7. There's a number of ways Thomas is able to generate those chances, which are crucial to his efficiency as a scorer. It helps that he sells contact very well, but fundamentally, his strength is that Due to the unpredictable nature of his game that we touched on earlier, he catches defenders out of position and uncertain often. That makes him a foul drawing machine on jump shots. He's willing to rise up for jumpers in tight windows without shying away from contact as he asserts his right to the space, which often catches defenders off guard and leads to fouls. His step back also just throws defenders into a panic. All of a sudden, they have a massive unexpected gap to close and they often lunge too aggressively and again infringe on his landing space. Occasionally, Thomas can exaggerate or create contact there, and he may kick out a leg, and while he'll get called for that every once in a while, the benefits far outweigh the negatives there, because NBA officiating is, obviously, aggressively pro-offense. His pump fakes also get people jumping, and he sometimes finds people with their hands in the cookie jar, but most importantly, he has an awareness of these opportunities. Free throws are a pivotal weapon for a great scorer. Not only are they more efficient than basically any field goal attempt, but they also represent a safety valve on an off night. If my shot isn't falling, I can get to the line 12 times and still help carry my team, which is huge. 19 year olds just do not often operate like that. That's an advanced NBA skill set. And I think the fact that Thomas already has that down is reflective of how high his ceiling as a scorer really is. But Cam isn't just a guy who projects well as a ball dominant guy. He also shot 38% on catch and shoot triples in college, which is an excellent number, and I think he has real potential there. He's a confident, natural presence who quickly gets into his motion, and I think that 38% number is much more reflective of his true ability as a three-point shooter, because although he shot just 32.5% from deep in college, a lot of those were tough attempts off the dribble. If you can shoot 88% from the line and 38% off the catch, I have zero questions about your shot, and I think Thomas will only get better there in the league. He also had a couple nice cuts in Summer League and has shown solid instincts to relocate off ball, which matters a lot because you need to be able to play alongside and benefit from other great players in the NBA, particularly in a situation like Brooklyn. So that brings us to what Cam can actually provide for the Nets, because he's not just going to any old situation. He's going to be trying to help a team win a title immediately. So what can he do? Well, first off, Cam can be a lead scorer off the bench. Without Dinwiddie or Levert last year, there was a void in that role and Cam will immediately be a good enough scorer to fill it at least competently. Cam also serves as insurance. I don't think anyone expects the Nets to be as unfortunate health-wise as they were in last year's playoffs when they had KD and 40% of Harden at the end of it all, but we saw that although Joe Harris may be the best offensive fourth option in basketball when he can feed off of the big three, he was clearly not equipped to carry the load of a big-time shot creator, nor was anybody else on this roster. With Cam, sure, there are other issues, and he may not always be overwhelmingly efficient, but he absolutely has the tools to get you 30 on a night when you really need it. Great teams need a variety of shot creators, and Cam is another option there. Other than that, if he can embrace minutes as a catch and shooter and give consistent effort on defense, he should be able to play a more simplified role with the starters too. And let me be clear, 
Cam still has to show that he can make that adjustment, and he needs to improve in several areas. He's too trigger happy right now, his playmaking is not nearly where it needs to be, given the average 1.4 assists per game in college, he doesn't always get to the rim easily due to his athletic limitations, and he's in the most consistent finisher when he gets there, and he needs to lock in more on defense. But the reason I haven't focused on those issues is because, again, he just went 27th overall. His current scoring skill set alone makes him a home run there. I can confidently say with Thomas that you're looking at a guy with the tools to be an elite sixth man, a filled up scorer with a Jordan Clarkson kind of impact on the game, and if he figures out a few things, shot selection, playmaking, and defense, he could be a true star. And sure, that's a lot to ask, but again, I hope we can appreciate that he's 19 years old. The truth is, your favorite player today probably was not scoring at this level at 19, so just keep that in mind. If you give him NBA coaching and spacing and put the ball in his hands more as a pick and roll decision maker to just allow him to figure things out there, the ceiling is the roof. He has a bunch of tools that you very rarely see in a physical frame that should allow him to handle the taxing role of a number one option if he ever gets that level. No matter what though, that's still a ways away. For now, he needs to, at the very least, compete on defense. If he doesn't do that, it might be tough to play in meaningful minutes, but if the guy isn't willing to play defense on a title caliber team when he has solid physical tools there, he's not worth all the praise I've given him. So I'm not sure what his role is immediately. That'll depend on his ability to make those adjustments in his game. He very well may only play 15 to 18 minutes a night and will almost certainly be inconsistent in year one, but I truly believe the Nets needed that little bit of extra punch and he can bring it. If Cam Thomas scored 25 points in an NBA Finals game as a rookie, I would not be shocked. And there's not many guys I can say that about. So everybody else can take their high floor options and their solid late first rounders, and the Nets will just take one of the purest buckets in this class. A guy with a high long-term ceiling who can also get you buckets right now as they go out there and win a title. The rich really do just get richer. To those of you who have made it this far, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, I highly recommend you stick around here on our YouTube channel. As you can see, I do a couple of podcasts a week with my friend Logan here. We post the full videos to our channel. You can also listen in audio form, Spotify, Apple, wherever, and I'll link the podcast in the description here. But we talk about the NBA, we talk about the NFL, we do trivia, we're both huge sports history nerds, so I recommend that you check all of that out. You can also follow us on social media, Twitter is at nerd underscore sesh, Instagram is at nerd sesh, as is TikTok, and of course elsewhere on our YouTube channel you can see video breakdowns, video essays that we do like this. I try to make one every week, and Logan contributes as well there. So... If any of that sounds good to you, you know where to find us. With that, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed.